Focus epidermidis. It is a gram positive coxar. I have recently uploaded a video on Staphylococcus aureus. If you have missed that, find its link in the description or in the top right corner. The word Staphylococcus is composed of two words. First is Staphylo, which means cluster, and the second one is Coccus, which means spherical. To outline, as you are done with the introduction, now we'll be looking at a morphology, habitat and transmission, pathogenesis, its clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Classification of Staphylococcus. It is further classified into Staphylococcus aureus. It is the most common of all the three staph. The second one is Staphylococcus epidermidis, the topic of today's video. And the third one is Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Morphology. Shape. It is spherical, round or berry-like. It is arranged in irregular grape-like clusters. It may occur in pairs or short chains, but for epidermidis, it is going to mainly occur in pairs, but also in short chains sometimes. Its diameter varies from 0.5 to 1 one micrometer its color varies depending on the stain like blue or purple as it is a gram positive bacteria so it will stain purple it will be white or yellow depending on it whether it is coagulase positive or negative structure as I've mentioned earlier that this bacterium has got no motility apparatus like flagella it has a capsule around it that is the protective covering around any bacteria it has a cell wall having its components and antigens like protein a type acid surface receptors and peptidoglycan layer and then it also has a cell membrane i've got a detailed video on bacterial structure find its link in the description or in the top right corner as in this picture you can see that this is the bacterium okay it has got its capsule its peptidoglycan layer there its membrane it also has some enzymes like catalase urease and this is the lipotychoic acid present in the cell wall uh, if we zoom in this part of the bacterium we'll get to know that it has got lipotychoic acids clamping factors fibronectin binding protein collagen adhesins and lipoproteins in it habitat human beings are the main reservoirs but for staphylococcus epidermidis it mainly exists on the skin of human beings okie dokie next up is transmission transmission occurs by hand contact formites like towels or clothing when you puncture and certain devices like catheters maybe the urinary catheter prosthetic devices like prosthetic joints for example prosthetic hip joint and prosthetic heart walls and certain other devices like tampons nasal packings and certain lap pads and wounds after surgery can also be the means of transmitting staphylococcus epidermidis from skin into the body that is responsible for causing infection pathogenesis staphylococcus epidermidis causes damage by biofilms let's see how as i told you staphylococcus epidermidis causes disease by producing biofilms bacteria on any device like a catheter or prosthetic devices releases EPS that causes it to be resistant against antibiotics and immune system. It forms biofilms on catheters like vascular catheters, this one, and uh, maybe urinary catheters. And in prosthetic devices, you've got prosthetic hot walls and prosthetic joints. So biofilms are formed on these things and are responsible for causing infection. Clinical findings. Staphylococcus epidermidis is responsible for causing catheter-associated infections. Catheter-associated urinary tract infection is quite common. We also call it COTC-AUTI. And prosthetic wall infection like the prosthetic hot wall infections and prosthetic joint infection mostly the hip joint is involved lab diagnosis prior to doing any procedure we need samples we'll need a sample of skin or soft tissue blood urine catheters or prosthetic devices because the bacteria may be present on them because the biofilm is attached on these devices that's why the first procedure that we are going to do is microscopy but prior to microscopy we are going to do what gram stain gram stain will reveal that this bacteria is gram positive and is cocci because it will be round in shape. Smears under the microscope will reveal crepe like clusters, pairs or short chains, purple color due to crystal. We're going to confirm that test by bubbles formation as we know that is positive for all the three staff but how this test is performed. Let's see. We take a petri dish, we put the bacterium in the petri dish, then we pour some solution of hydrogen peroxide if the bacterium is responsible for releasing catalase enzyme this catalase enzyme will convert the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen and oxygen will be responsible for forming the bubbles and 
if the bacteria does not release a catalase, so this test will be negative. As we know, Staph epidermidis is catalase positive. It will release a catalase. Hydrogen peroxide will be converted into water and oxygen. Bubbles will be formed. So this test is positive. Yeah. As you can see there on the slide, this one showing bubbles is catalase positive, but this one showing no bubbles is catalase negative. Same goes for the test tubes. Culture. As the Staph epidermidis is coagulase negative, so it will form white colonies. We are going to use a solid medium, mainly it is mannitol salt agar. Colonies will appear on that agar. These will be round, smooth to slightly rougher wrinkled, rays, golden yellow or white. But if it is epidermidis, so these will be white. And these are opaque with distinct margins. As you can see in this picture, this is mannitol salt agar and these colonies are white in color. Okay, as we've talked about the solid culture medium, now we are going to look at the liquid medium. That is urea broth. And we we do what? We add phenol red into the urea broth. As in this picture, you can see the urea broth, but no phenol red is added into it. Small clumps or aggregates are formed, and this confirms the test that this bacteria is the urease positive. In the culture tube, turbid or cloudy appearance of medium will be found. Clumps that are formed, they may settle down at the bottom of the culture tube, or they may float. This test is positive for staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus. That's why we say that these are the urease positive bacteria, because this test is the urease test and it is done with liquid medium urea broth. The procedure of urease test. We take the urea broth, we add phenol red into it. It will look like that. After that, we'll add bacteria into it. If the bacteria has urease enzyme, it will convert the urea present in the urine into ammonia and will turn the red color into pink with the clumps formed. The pink test tube will confirm that it is urease positive bacteria. So the, there will be no pink color formed, so it will be urease negative bacteria. Time to talk about novobiosin sensitivity test. What is a novobiosin? It is an antibiotic. We put that antibiotic in the center of a petri dish, and petri dish is filled with the bacterium we are going to check. Prior to confirming the test, let me tell you that Staph epidermidis is sensitive to it. Novobiosin sensitive bacteria means that bacterium dies in the presence of novobiosin. Novobiosin. And novobiosin resistant bacterium means that bacterium survives in the presence of novobiosin. Now let's look at the petri dish having the staph epidermidis. What happens? The bacterium die. This means that staph epidermidis is sensitive to novobiosin. On the other hand, if staph saprophyticus is put into the petri dish, it is going to survive. So this is going to be resistant to novobiosin. For treating these staph infections caused by the staph epidermidis, we are going to use certain antibiotic. There are two classes for that purpose. Number one is methicillin sensitive staph epidermidis. These include oxicillin and naficillin and the second one is methicillin resistant staph epidermidis. This includes vancomycin. There are also certain procedures that we will perform in order to eradicate the cause. Number one is removal of catheters because it is possible for causing catheters associated or devices associated infections and we also remove the devices like removal of tampons, nasal packing, surgery lab pads and taking care of of the surgical wounds um, after surgery and a debridement of the infected site can also be helpful. Prevention cleanliness is really important in order to prevent any bacterial infection. Um, antiseptic, frequent hand washing, things like that can help. Prompt removal of external devices as I mentioned earlier like tampons, nasal packing, surgery lap pads. If we remove that, this is going to prevent the disease. Alright guys, let's wrap up the video in this table. The organism is Staphylococcus epidermidis. The diseases it is responsible for causing are the catheter associated infections, scatter associated urinary tract infection, prostatic joint or prostatic valve infections um, in joints, for example, hip joint is really common. Transmission occurs by hand contact, fomites, when you puncture devices like tampons, uh, nasal packing, scatheters, etc. And after surgery, the wounds may be responsible for transmitting the infection. Hosts are the human beings, the primary location of staph epidermidis skin. It is diagnosed with gram strain, microscopy, culture, catalase, urease tests, and novobiosin sensitivity tests. Treatment is is done with certain antibiotics like oxicillin, nephicillin, and vancomycin, and we can also remove the devices that are responsible for causing the infections. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, you found it educational and informative. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And also, if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I do upload blogs. So, if you spend some time, do give it a visit. And I'll catch you soon. Till then, assalamu alaikum.